Oh, look, that's us. We are live. Hey, folks. Hello, world of Facebook. Uh, hi. Um, this is the cast of Trifles, written by Susan Glassfell, as presented by the Studio Theater um, for our virtual play reading series. Welcome to our live talk back. Um, yeah, uh, so thanks for watching us, and uh, please take the time now to just start popping up any questions into our chat room, um, and we can answer them here for you. Yeah. Cool. Um, well, I'll start with a question for the cast. Um, how do you guys feel about this kind of performance, whether it's watching or being a part of the process? Um, how do you guys feel? I'll take a first crack at it. Um, uh, it's, it's inspiring to see um, the way that art needs to come out. Um, it, it, it's, it's an impossibility to, for anything, any type of uh, social global situation to ever fully suppress that type of, of spirit. And every single time something like this happens, it, it fills my hopefulness up a bit. So that's how I feel about it. Uh, I mean, it's, it's great being able to, you know, still work with people and, and, and really some of them I wouldn't normally get to work with. I mean, from all over the country, the tallest man on earth. Uh, his name's Christian Matson. He's Swedish. Uh, but he play, he's probably one of the best claw hammer banjo players in the world. He's kind of like Sweden's Bob Dylan. And his tour was interrupted in, in the middle of his North American tour. And I think he's stuck somewhere in the Finger Lakes district. But every Friday, he live streams a concert uh, on the banjo and just sings covers and his own music and stuff. And uh, so I'm getting, uh, he was not coming anywhere near Florida this tour. I'm getting to see him every week. So, you know, <laughs> in some ways, uh, the, the virus has brought us all closer together. So there you go. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Um, I agree. I think it's really cool that we get to connect across so many lines. Um, normally, we really have uh, to, you know, work to get to work with uh, people from other places. Um, and get, being able to watch theater for myself. Um, I watched uh, Love written by Kate Cortesi presented by the Marin Theater Company. And it was a show I would have never been able to see. And I'm so happy I did because it was fantastic. And I was fortunate enough to be able to pay for a ticket to see it as well. Um, so it's not only watching theater and I was also supporting it um, from so far away. I love everything that everybody's saying and I feel like right now we're just gonna like love fest about everything which is awesome <laughs> but like I right now I'm seeing too like how much creative potential there is that we sort of maybe haven't pushed ourselves into before because we haven't had to and it's so interesting too to kind of think about the ways that we can fill out or explore this world in a way, especially us as theater actors, maybe not being someone that's, that's normally on film or thinking about audio or this kind of experience. It's really fun to sort of open up the box of, of what possibilities there are too. It's really fun. Yeah, I agree. It looks like we have a questions coming in on our Facebook. I have, let's see. Sherry or Cherie. Sorry. Um, uh, she watched last week, but is still wondering about rehearsals and getting into character um, and the line. Uh, I assume that means learning the lines. If anyone has any thoughts about that. Well, I think she corrected it afterwards. She said she meant and the like. So like things of that nature, I believe. Thanks, Joe. Yep. I mean, I'll take that one. Um, it is because it's such a compressed process. You know, we're doing this, you know, in about a week span. So we get a rehearsal or, you know, a, re a rehearsal or two. And, um, you know, with this, we got to dive in a little bit more um, because it's a shorter play. So, you know, we have a long, we have this, these rehearsal periods and we can kind of pick it apart a bit more. With Pygmalion, you know, a, a five act, there wasn't quite as much being able to really dive into your character. Um, 
with this one, it, it helps too that they're kind of historical pieces. So that gives us, even when they're not, you know, factual characters, we can go back and research, we can look at the time um, and, and do that. Because of course, the way Mrs. Peters reacts to some of the things that are said are very different than the way Allison Johnson would react to somebody telling me my life is about trifles. Um, so, you know, yeah, there's, it, it's a little, the, re, the research and the preparation is a little broader maybe than it would be if I had weeks and weeks to prep it, but there is having that long stretch of time and that historical background, I think is, is more important with this type of situation. That's also helpful that we don't have to memorize everything because <laughs> that's quite a time suck sometimes. <laughs> Yeah, so we had uh, two rehearsals where we were able to read through and uh, talk about the play as a whole, um, which is something we normally do um, when we're in a rehearsal room all together. Uh, and then we also uh, went through each of the scenes and dug in. So we definitely had time with trifles to do all the things that I think at the end of the rehearsal process, we were all like, yeah, this feels good. And that was a really nice uh, feeling because I don't, I haven't had that feeling in a little bit. So it was, it was great. Uh, it looks like we have another question. Um, how do you wind down after your performance? I, I personally like to immediately go home. Um, so thankfully, uh, no, I, I, I would say just like, just like anything else, you know, you, you're, you're in this emotional state, whatever, whatever, whatever it is that you are able to, to sort of, you know, churn up during it. And, and just like anything else there, there, I, we all have our own individual, you know, uh, processes and whatever it is, you know, I, I like to do a lot of breathing and things of that nature, but I mean, it's, Person, I didn't find that part of this experience actually to be much different than than it would have been had I just gotten off stage. I definitely, um, I feel the thing that's interesting to me about like winding down here is that we're not getting the same like exhale as a group where we all get to go like, oh, how are you and what a great job and I really appreciated this part so I always feel like a crazy person I'm like running around the house like the just like because you for me it's just like a lot of extra energy so usually there's like a loud loud pop of singing and then usually like running to my significant other and like this is everything that happened um so I think that's interesting <laughs> for me I'm usually like a, a ball of energy afterwards so it's for me I miss that moment to like kind of spread it out to, to other people. <laughs> Me? Hi. <laughs> um, it's, it's interesting that you said that about the energy. Um, I usually have about a two minute burst of that in a dressing room and then I'm ready to completely desensitize and go home like you're sort of talking about Joe and on a couch with a blanket something to eat and like watch something that has nothing to do with whatever I just did. And it, it's been so interesting to talk to other people who with other jobs and other types of vocations and careers where they aren't used to this kind of emotional drain and empathy drain. And so it's been curious to talk to other people outside of the arts needing the kind of desensitizing because of all the interactions they're now having related to all this. So this makes sense at all. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, I hear you. It's definitely, even I'm not performing, um, but I, I'm with you and feeling you in every moment. And I think this, as an audience as a whole, um, I just saw a comment from Mary. Uh, she really enjoyed the reading and felt like they were right here in the scene. Uh, it exceeded their expectations and they're very grateful for all of your talents. Um, and I agree. Uh, and being with the journey and through it all, 
um, it, for me, it's exhausting as the director because I'm like, oh my God, they're doing it. Um, and it's even, I wish I can like extend my gratitude and I'm sure our audience does as well, which can extend their gratitude physically or um, energy wise uh, to, to all of you who are doing fantastic work. Um, sorry, Elias, I know you had an answer to the previous question, so I'll throw it back to you. Oh, sure. I can be brief. It's uh, after something like this, which, uh, which was such a treat to get to experience with everyone here and is uh, I like to de-roll from the character and the show and, and take the aspects of that character that I admired, even if they're kind of slimy in moments, there's something about them that I can take and put into my psychology to like help me in a certain way. So I like to learn from the characters I play, take the things I like, and then let go of the things I don't like. So I, so I merge and grow with each character that I play. And that's been part of my process. So, um, and then I'll go off to focus on something else completely. Yeah, um, I had a question. Um, what is the hardest part of putting this, a piece like this together? Um, I mean, I can speak towards scheduling, even though everyone's at home, people are still super busy with their families and home life first, and then adding on any other work duties that are expected of them. So scheduling has been a little bit of a hiccup for us. Um, we've had really long days and we've had short days too. So um, that's one part of the process that's been difficult. Yeah, uh, for me, the hardest part because it's so short, I mean, we had two rehearsals for this and after the second rehearsal we recorded. And so the hardest part for me was getting out of my head and staying focused just for those couple of hours uh, and having to stay focused for the, re the remainder of the rehearsals. I kept being pulled in directions because I haven't gotten a chance to tune in like this with a group for a certain amount of hours. So that was the hardest part and just kind of surrendering to the character and the experience and staying in touch with what everyone else was saying. That was the hardest part for me. Old, old guy here. Uh, the, the hardest part for me is, uh, are my earphones plugged in? Uh, do they fall out of my head? Uh, uh, what button do I push? Uh, is, uh, is this thing on? You know, it, all, <laughs> all the computer stuff, you know. I feel like I need to call my son in here every five minutes and go, how does this work? <laughs> so for me, it's the tech end of this is the hardest part. But you're doing a great job, Bobby. Well, thank you. <laughs> of course. You thank sound you. great and you look great. Yeah. Yeah, Joe. Uh, actually, I would say the, the m most difficult part lines up a lot with what Monica said before. It, it's, it's not having that face-to-face that -face contact with my castmates, uh, not having those rehearsals where we're just, you know, the, the, the moments in between the moments when the cast really bonds, um, not having that, which is such a, such a treasured, sacred part of it, uh, that's, that's been definitely the most difficult. I agree, um, and I, what I find interesting as we continue through our series is that I think we're starting to have those moments over Zoom. Mm. We, right before we went live, we were all laughing and just cracking jokes. I think we're kind of getting used to uh, talking to each other like this. I know I'm incredibly awkward, or at least I was when at the start of all the Zoom meetings, and now I'm not watching myself as much. I'm watching you guys, which is cool. All right, uh, looks like I had another question. Um, do you need to prep immediately ahead of starting a remote read? I'm not sure. I'm not 100% positive I understand your question, but maybe someone else does. Again, it's uh, do you need to prep immediately ahead of starting a remote read? I think that kind of goes with anything where it's like, yeah, you should. <laughs> <laughs> where it's like, yeah, when you get, for the most part with anything, it's it's best to try and jump in as soon as you can. 
Um, I think for myself, I definitely learned that then that there is a different type and maybe level of prep work because there is a limited rehearsal. Um, it is for all of us sort of a new medium. So there are a lot of obstacles kind of maybe getting in the way of performing. So it's, yes. Um, uh, this also sort of ties back to something that's kind of more difficult or, or maybe not more difficult, but a challenge in terms of if I think specifically to my prep related to doing this kind of reading, if I'm thinking about my craft and acting, I have all these ways in which I set myself up for success in terms of the way I'm gonna prep my body, my mind, all those things. Sitting here in front of a laptop, making sure that I'm in a frame that maybe this makes me a little bit weaker, this makes me a little bit stronger, this is thinking about movement and then also having my hands placed so that I can scroll perfectly through the script, but stay at the ready and openly available for the content and the emotion and the, so it's like preparing so that the things that like Bobby is talking about, the technical stuff doesn't get in the way of the other stuff. So prep, it's a really good question. Prep is everything. It's a legit new skill. It's a new right. skill to, to acquire. Right. My yeah. body does not have that in it at the ready to just, so it's new. Yeah. Thanks for that, Joe. Yeah. yeah. I think too, there was for me Line as well. Line of preparation. There was, oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, even on the, on the, the screen side, like what, what, uh, PDF reader are going to use? Can you mark in it easily? Can, what's the best way to highlight it? Do you need different colors to highlight it so you can like read it better? There's a little bit of like an organizational state. Yeah, it's the, the stage. Uh, Grace is, I'm sure, about that life. Um, but yeah, it's a there is a different a different sort of prep and it's a, a different medium. So that yeah, that's so cool, Heather. See, and I have not graduated from obnoxious note taking and paper and like I can't function without a script um, we do get the script well before the rehearsal so there is that form of immediate preparation so as soon as I get the script I read it um, you know I can read on a screen but for my process you know I, I like to be able to hold it highlight it make notes here's you know underline the word that you know and I cannot do that in a pdf Absolutely. reader and and there's and then there's too many devices, but then I've got this paper, and I don't want you to see me moving the script. So it's just, it's it's a lot of weird juggling that you don't deal with in a rehearsal. You don't deal with even in a regular old reading, you know, in in front of a crowd. So um, yeah. All right, we have another question from Tara Cromer. Hi, Tara. Um, she was with us in season three she directed a sh it should have been you so hello and welcome to our stream um yes the uh video of the performance will still be available you can find it on our facebook it's also on the village's entertainment youtube channel so if you look up the village's entertainment you'll find not only trifles but you'll find pygmalion and the uh live stream uh talk back from pygmalion as well uh and she has a question for you guys. Uh, as theater artists, we're all eager to be back in the rehearsal room and on stage. Are there provisions you feel will be important to you as actors regarding social distancing whenever things start to open back up? Yes. Yes. I, a vaccine. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look, the, the, the simple fact is that it, it, as much as uh, there has been talks of when it comes back and when it comes back and when it comes back and it's not actually going anywhere. So until, as Heather just said, until there is a vaccine, then the only thing we have is uh, treatment and safety guidelines. That's, that's all we have. So I think they should continue to be um, exercised and and seriously considered. It's my personal opinion. And sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I think it's going to affect selections. Um, 
because there are plays, there's a lot of plays. You can't, you can't act in social distance. I, I mean, it's going to be very difficult to, as difficult as this is, it's still, imagine if, you know, they put Heather right in front of me, but said, okay, but stay six feet away from her. It's like, <laughs> you know, I still can't, I, I can kind of, but I still can't draw quite as much from the eyes across the stage. So it's, yeah, I mean, we keep thinking about going back, but it's like, yeah, when's that really going to be? Like, when are we going to be back to full-blown, you know, intimate theater? I don't know. So I try to think about it. <laughs> That, that question kind of excites me because uh, we have to invent new ways to connect and we have to listen with more of our body. And, you know, we can feel each other six feet through the internet like we are right now. As far, we can connect in all different ways. So I think we're going to have to expand our range of listening. And um, there's I, one of my favorite plays that I've been exploring recently is um, it's called Stupid Effing Bird. And there's this character named Conrad who harps on needing new ways of theater, saying things in new ways. And I think now is the time when we're just going to have to kind of fess up and, and find new ways to connect and, and find new ways to engage audiences. Like they can't, if we can't connect six feet, they can't sit next to each other to watch the show. So everything's going to need to shift. And um, I think that, that opens for an exciting possibility. I, I, Elias, I love you. You're the best. Um, I love you too. That is brilliant. And it's so true. Theater artists, we love challenges. That's like our whole shtick. Give us a challenge and we're going to do it. So you're right. And there's something about this that you all were speaking about earlier. There's an accessibility to this that there wasn't before. So what other possibilities are there and what potential and, and, and what can we find? The end. All right, we have two more questions uh, and then we're gonna be reaching towards the end. So if, if you have any other burning questions, audience, please uh, pop them in now and we'll try to rapid fire them. All right, let's see. Uh, similar to winding down, do you need to plug into your character or do you just get up and go? I mean, I'm, I'm not an actor, so <laughs> it, uh, I, 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 this was, I'm a country guy. <laughs> so I, uh, and I'm, 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 I'm a slow, dumb country guy and I played a sort of slow, dumb country guy. So <laughs> uh, this was not a big leap. I once heard that uh, risk taking and acting is the distance between you and the character. So I'm assuming if I were playing British aristocracy or something, then I'd have to do a lot more prep. But to, to play a dumb old country guy, uh, uh, th that wasn't, uh, it was like a half step for me. I will not <laughs> sit here and stand for any more Bobby Bell sandbagging. Agreed. Um, I don't accept. I'm not an actor. Like we, like we're all new here, and we've never met you. <laughs> uh, for folks that have their scripts on screen, um, do you have two screens, or is it uh, on the same one? I, I don't mean to hog, but I, I just learned how to do that the last time. <laughs> I've been sitting here doing this forever, and I just finally learned how to do the half screen without making both screens disappear the last time. So, yeah, it's a lot better. <laughs> and Joe, thank you. You, you. you were the one that suggested. <laughs> but, yeah, before I had it down here and I had my computer up on two Bibles, <laughs> so the script had fit underneath it. <laughs> All right, let's see. Um, and then I just wanted to ask Bobby, our next uh, play in our series is Liz Estrada. And you adapted Liz Estrada and so gratefully have provided a script for us um, that you had already written. Can, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I used to work in uh, 
academia and uh, to save the college money uh, many years ago, I, I, I read a few other languages and write in a few other languages, Greek one of them. So I did a, a pidgin Greek translation of uh, Lysistrata and then uh, adapted it uh, to an era <laughs> I unfortunately know, which is uh, 1970s disco funk. Uh, uh, I have a weird record collection for a hillbilly. I probably have more James Brown and Earth, Wind and Fire and <laughs> other hill people in the holler. Uh, I love funk. Ohio players, I mean, Ohio. <laughs> so uh, so it's, it's a version of Lysistrata that started with a, an original translation and then I adapted it and set it in uh, funky town. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to have it done again. Um, um, and, oh yeah. And it'll be fun. So our yeah, come team, down and hit funky. <laughs> our team is super excited to get funky. So we are excited for that rehearsal process that's starting up soon. Um, and for, this is for our audience. I saw that some people had some trouble finding our links. Um, so there are a few different ways that you can find us. Um, you can find us uh, all these streamed videos on our event pages. Um, you can, uh, there will be a link posted ahead of time before the actual premiere of the video that you can request to get a notification on and just boop, uh, press the request notification on and it will let you know at one o'clock that we are streaming the video. You can also find us on our YouTube page at uh, the Village's Entertainment. And the same thing, the video, will, if you go there before one o'clock, the video will start at one or as close to that as possible. You can also find the streamed video on our website if you uh, go to the thesharonstudio.com. Um, and it is right there, nice and big. Uh, it'll populate itself and uh, start playing at one o'clock p.m. Again, every Friday at one um, until, for further notice, <laughs> um, uh, we will be bringing you some nice theater and uh, with people that you've seen on our studio stage. Yeah. All right. Is that all? Any final thoughts? Thank Ooh. you to everyone who watched. Thank you Thank to you. this collection of beautiful artists and just much love to, to everyone. So much love, y'all. All right, that's it for today. Thanks again from the studio. Um, come back, find us next Friday, and we'll see you soon. Stay safe, stay healthy. Bye. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. 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 B